우리 당과 국가 군대의 최고 령도자 경의하는 최고 령도자 동지께서는 미국의 대조선 적대시 정책과 이번 한미연합 미사일 사격은 북한의 어떠한 도발도 용납하지 않겠다는 한미동맹의 강력한 의지를 표현한 것입니다. Well, uh, Xi Jinping's visit here to Russia does come at a time when China's relations with the U.S. are on shaky ground. That's after Beijing ordered military vessels and jets to warn off an American warship, which, according to China, violated its territorial waters in the South China Sea. On a broader perspective, RT's Kelia Mopan now has been looking at where things have been going wrong between Beijing and Washington. Remember the famous chocolate cake that Donald Trump used to woo the Chinese leader? We had the most beautiful piece of chocolate cake that you've ever seen. President Xi was enjoying it. That was the first time that Trump and Xi met, with Trump putting on a grand dinner for Xi, which also featured Trump's granddaughter singing a song for Xi in Chinese. <laughs> Well, that was back in April. Since then, Trump's charm offensive seems to have faltered. Here's how the Chinese foreign ministry sees it. President Xi explicitly pointed out that China-U.S. relations have made great progress in the recent days, but they have also been affected by some negative factors. A fair few such factors, actually, like the U.S. accusing China of being a top human trafficking offender. China was downgraded to Tier 3 status in this year's report, in part because it has not taken serious steps to end its own complicity in trafficking. And Washington's plan to sell $1.4 billion in arms to Taiwan, which China regards as a breakaway province, didn't exactly go down well either. Taiwan is an inalienable part of China, and the U.S. weapons sale to Taiwan violates international laws as well as the basic forms of international relations. China firmly opposes it. Another thing that China firmly opposes is the installation of American missiles right on its doorstep. The deployment of the U.S. THAAD missile defense system in South Korea does serious damage to the strategic security interests of all countries in the region, including China and Russia, and disrupts the regional strategic balance. Well, it looks like relations between Beijing and Washington won't be seeing any major reset. But how big of a blow is that to China? Right now, China's President Xi is in Moscow. Both China and Russia would like to uh, demonstrate the common interest in view of the deteriorating relations with the United States. Both understand that the Donald Trump administration 
presents uh, a serious factor of uncertainty, and they remain very cautious. Demonstration of solidarity between China and Russia is seen to be beneficial on the part of both uh, leaders. The DPRK proclaims itself a nuclear power. It claims to have made significant progress towards fulfilling its nuclear ambitions, in particular towards developing an intercontinental ballistic missile with a nuclear warhead capable of reaching the United States. By conservative estimates, Pyongyang has enough fissile material to build around a half dozen nuclear weapons. It has carried out several increasingly powerful nuclear tests since 2006. In September 2016, the North claimed it had carried out a nuclear test using a miniaturized warhead, small enough to fit into a missile warhead. The DPRK has been developing missiles for more than three decades. In 1984, it started by testing a variant of the Soviet Scud B tactical missile, with a range of around 300 kilometers. It later built the Rodong-1, with four times the range. Then in 1998, its Tepidong-1 missile flew over Japan, landing in the Pacific Ocean. After a self-imposed moratorium on missile tests that lasted a number of years, Pyongyang tested several failed long-range missiles, including the Tepidong-2, believed capable of reaching Alaska. After more unsuccessful tests, in December 2012, the DPRK successfully fired its long-range Unha-3 rocket, putting its first satellite into orbit. South Korean officials claimed it could fly more than 10,000 kilometers. In January 2016, the DPRK claimed it tested a hydrogen bomb. A month later, another long-range rocket put Pyongyang's second satellite into space. Many condemned it as a covert ballistic missile test. The fact that uh, President Trump uh, has got his own forces here in, on ground in Poland and that he uh, invested more in, the, in the, uh, financially also in the security of our region and that he prolongs the uh, financial support for this, uh, for this pre pre presence of, of his troops in Poland towards uh, more than uh, that was uh, intended uh, uh, previously. Kristen Fisher is live in Warsaw, Poland. Uh, Chris, Kristen, let's begin with the North Korean missile test. How is the president responding? Well, Molly, President Trump is really responding by putting a lot of pressure on North Korea's neighbors, and he's going to be meeting with a lot of those nations' leaders at the G20 summit a little bit later this week. But let's take a look at what President Trump said earlier today on Twitter. He said, quote, North Korea has just launched another missile. Does this guy have anything better to do with his life? Hard to believe that South Korea and Japan will put up with this much longer. Perhaps China will put a heavy move on North Korea and end this nonsense once the border with Russia. It's very wary of Moscow. Um, so they want President Trump to really reconfirm its commitment to NATO, especially the alliance's military buildup in Eastern Europe, which ramped up after Russia-backed forces invaded Ukraine and includes about 1,000 U.S. troops currently on the ground there. But on the other hand, President Putin, he wants the exact opposite. Trump has to choose really uh, here to some extent. He has to choose whether he's going to um, prioritize um, the NATO alliance, prioritize transatlantic security and standing with um, European countries to deter Russia, or prioritize improved relations with Russia. Now, when President Trump lands here in Poland tomorrow night, he'll likely receive a much warmer welcome than the one that he's going to receive in Germany. That's because Poland, like the U.S., is now run by a conservative government that favors restrictive immigration policies and opposes many environmental regulations. It's also one of the few NATO allies to meet its commitment uh, to spend about 2%, 2 percent of its GDP on defense. So there's a lot of similarities between the Trump administration and the Polish government. The question the question, though, is will they differ on the one issue that matters most, Russia? Molly? It will be fascinating to see what sort of reception President Trump receives on this second trip. Christian Fisher from Poland, thank you. I think uh, what uh, North Korea has established today uh, is that the era of strategic patience, as we like to say in Washington, is really just beginning. It's not over. Uh, uh, this new development isn't a use of any new technology, far from it. It's 60-year-old technology. Uh, what North Korea is doing is making it essential uh, that the powers that surround it, in particular the nuclear powers, 
engage with it now politically uh, in a system of negotiations and eventually treaties that will bring North Korea into the global community of nuclear powers. That, that's a big change, uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a dangerous change. Yeah, I mean, they've not been scared to breach the UN resolution, have they? They've continuously done that. Washington's trying to put pressure on China, but um, this is a joint call now between Beijing and Moscow. Will Washington heed to the call for de-escalation? Do you think they'll, they'll take, take action? Well, I think the Chinese foreign ministry today uh, said it best when they called for uh, uh, calm and restraint so that all of the sides can get together and begin to resolve uh, this difference. There, there's no, North Korea hasn't gained any useful military capability here. Uh, should they ever launch a strike, the consequences would be catastrophic for North Korea. So they don't expect them to gain any military advantage. Uh, what they're looking for and what they've achieved now uh, is status as a nuclear power. And that status will convey political advantages. Uh, clearly, Washington, Moscow, and uh, Beijing will have to cooperate on this issue uh, to bring the right kind of pressure to bear, to bring North Korea to the table, and eventually to create the same kind of arms control regime that has kept ballistic missiles from being used since they were first uh, launched in 1958. The, the way forward here is political. Uh, it's not military. And it's going to be very slow. Uh, it won't be marked by sudden breakthroughs. That's what we've seen in all of the negotiated arms control agreements mm -hmm. since the original uh, START talks, the SALT talks back in the 1960s. I mean, you're saying that the solution is political uh, and not uh, military, and we seem to be getting contradictory uh, rhetoric from the Trump administration, don't we? So at the moment, we're getting reports that the Pentagon is considering a show of force. Um, how helpful, how useful are comments like this? How could that play out if they do show uh, whatever that means, a, a show of force? Well, we've, uh, I think all sides have had some experience with that in the last few years. And uh, that seems to satisfy some short-term uh, domestic political objectives. But it doesn't change the facts on the ground. North Korea now has uh, at least a limited ballistic missile capability. They have at least a limited nuclear weapons capability. The question is, uh, how will the world deal with the emergence of this new set of facts. The experience of the last 60 years is very consistent here. Uh, it's that the, the only way forward that actually works is to bring the parties together and to negotiate. That's clearly the hope of the North Korean regime. And you see that today when they, they're a bit uh, heavy handed by immediately demanding you know, changes in the exercise regime and so forth. Uh, it's not likely that that'll happen. But what is likely is that quiet diplomacy will emerge here uh, as a way of engaging North Korea and the regional partners, including the Japanese, by the way, uh, 